Got a great viewer question today about quarterbacks and the timing of throwing routes. Every quarterback out there, every coach out there needs to understand this. I see young kids make this mistake all the time, but I also see pros make it too. I'm going to talk about it coming up right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, quarterbacks coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com and 11-year pro quarterback. Today, we're talking about when quarterbacks should throw the ball. And we got this viewer question from Eric Pennington, who writes, can you do a video on timing of the routes and when a quarterback should throw the ball? Now, I think Eric has a young quarterback at home, and so he's trying to teach his young quarterback in terms of timing when you should throw the football. I did a video a while back about drops and how drops time up with routes, and I'll put the video right up here in a card so you can click on that. I will also put the link in the description down below. And so, Eric, in answer to your question, like all things quarterback, it depends. And so I'm going to talk through today different routes. I'm going to show you some film, college players, in terms of routes, when you should be throwing as a quarterback. And I'm also going to take you through the route tree, and we'll talk about when the ball should come out of the quarterback's hands. Before I get started, make sure if you're new to the channel, if you're just getting here, if you love football content, that you subscribe and that you ring that bell. Get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. Give me a thumbs up, smash that like button, and leave me a comment. If you have a good one like Eric, then I will be sure to make a video for you. So, why does it depend? As a basic rule, I want all of my quarterbacks to throw with anticipation. And when you watch young quarterbacks, you know, especially the junior level, high school level, they want to see a route open before they throw the football. But as a quarterback, you don't want to be that guy. It's a, there's a term for it, and we've been using it ever since I was back in college, a see-it-and-throw-it guy. You have to see it open to throw it. By the time you see it open, defenses see it open, and they start to close on it. And so you want to throw with anticipation. Now, that said, different routes have different timing for quarterbacks. Like I said, we're going to take a look at a film in a second, and we're going to go through an entire route tree to talk about it. But quarterback drops are designed to time up with different routes and different route combinations. And you'll see some pro quarterbacks that actually – take different drops for the same routes because their steps and their timing is different. In the meantime, you'll see some receivers who take different steps to get to different depths in their route because their timing is different. So it all depends on the athletes that you have and which positions, what type of quarterback you are, what your drop sequence is like. Let's take a look at some film, and we'll talk about the ideal for a quarterback and when the ball comes out. So this footage is courtesy of University of California. And this is when Jared Goff was playing back there. Had, a, had the privilege of getting to know Jared and his family really well. And fantastic dude. But he does some really nice thing with his feet. And so let's take a look at it right now. Ideally, what you're trying to do is get the ball into the hands of your athletes in space as quickly as possible. So watch this drop and throw by Goff here. Quick jab fake, and he gets that ball out right away. One more time. Let's take a look at it. A little slower motion here. You can see Goff gets it, jab fake, gets his feet organized, and gets that ball out in a hurry so that his athlete can do something with it in space. That's the ideal. As quickly as you can get the ball to your guys in open space gives them the best chance to make a play. Now, that said, you can be too quick on things, too. That was set up to be a quick bubble screen to the outside off a jab fake, little RPO fake, and throw that bubble screen. When your guys are running different routes, there'll be the quick game, which if you're under center is three-step. If you're in the shotgun, it's a one-step or a false step with one step, what I call a punch step, a load step, and then drive step so that you throw. It's going to time out on that drop, with that route and so as a quarterback you want to throw the ball when you're throwing routes like that when the receiver is about to come out of their break especially versus man because that's when they'll have the greatest amount of separation so here you see jared again got great slow-mo footage and he's going to be throwing the out route now this may be a new receiver somebody he doesn't usually work with but watch him end up taking two quick hitch steps. See that right foot one? 
He hitches again right there and lets it go. Even at that, receiver's getting his head around just as Jared's throwing the ball. Boom. Head's coming back to the ball. Now, ideally, you see the receiver takes about five steps out because it takes a while for the ball to get there. But ideally, Jared would have gotten this ball out without the hitch or on the first hitch. If he gets it out right here, look at the separation that you've created between the receiver and the DB covering him. So you're going to have this kind of separation. The next step is going to create another six inches to a foot of separation. And that's going to be the maximum separation that you're going to have on the throw right there. If you're getting that receiver the ball right there or in the next step, he has the best chance. But watch as the DB closes with that ball in the air. Almost ends up going the other way. Those two quick hitches were the difference in terms of that DB being able to close or having separation as a receiver. So obviously, the quicker you can get the ball to the receiver while he has separation, the better. What does that mean for a quarterback? Well, it means that you have to practice and trust throwing to receivers before they actually get their head around. I hear some coaches teach it purely on the rhythm of the drop. I call them timing routes. Some guys call them rhythm routes. But it's, it's rhythm. I hit three, and I'm letting it go no matter where that receiver is. I hear other coaches teaching it that you want to get that ball moving when the receiver sinks his hips to go into his break. Any of those works, but as a quarterback, you want to get a lot of reps with your receivers, the guys you're going to be throwing to, and practice throwing to them as they're coming out of their breaks. The best quarterbacks are the quarterbacks who can anticipate the breaks of their receivers and get that ball in the air as they're going into their break. So that way, as they come out and they've created that biggest amount of separation versus man, they get the ball. Now, I promised I was going to show you a route tree and the timing it takes on each route when you want to throw it and how you want to process it and think it's a quarterback. So let's take a look at a route tree right now. So I like this route tree. This is great. I've never heard of the term bare butt before. It's usually called a pivot or a short comeback in any offense I've been into. But love this route tree. Super clean, super easy to read. So here it is as a quarterback. Super easy. A speed out. Number one. You want to throw this, if you're under center, hit three and throw. So three-step drop. As you hit that third step, you set that T-step towards your route, and you let this ball come out. We don't hitch on short, quick timing game throws. So hit that third step, have it come out. You want to be throwing this ball as he hits this speed turn, and his head will be just getting around as this ball gets into flight. So... It will get there as he flattens out of this out. Same thing on a hitch. You want to hit this hitch on under center, three hit and throw, a timing throw. And it's as his, since we're on the right side here, as his right foot, his last right foot sticks in the ground, his head hasn't turned yet. You want that ball to be in the air. So as he turns, he makes that catch and the ball is on him when he has separation. You better tell your receivers, though, they got to snap their head around. On the slant route, same exact thing. One, two, three for a quarterback. That ball is going to come out when he sticks that right foot in the ground as he makes his slant break. So timing, no hitches on a slant route on the inside. Now here, here's where things start to change. Second level routes. This bare butt is very similar to a pivot or the basic deep out. That is still a timing route. So if you are under center... This is five steps, hit, and throw. So this is timing right here. On the curl route, if you can, especially versus man, you also want to throw that on timing, five, hit, and throw. But the curl is one where you can actually take a hitch sometimes because depending on where that DB is playing, if he's inside, you may have to throw this ball and take him back to the outside. If he's hard outside, you may have to throw him open and slide him in. So sometimes a hitch is called for when you're throwing to that curl. Now we're getting deeper. This is a post. There's two different ways of running this post. 
You can run this as what's called a bang eight or a glance or a skinny post, in which case it's just like throwing an out route or that pivot in that you want to hit five and throw. This receiver, it's a seven step if you're a step counter. It's your fourth outside step if you only count every other step. As he sticks that right foot in the ground, this ball should be coming out. And he's going to catch this ball between 18 and 22 yards up the field for college quarterbacks, close to that in high school, and probably a little shorter than that for youth football. But you're trying to hit him in stride when he creates separation here in timing. Next route is a seven. So whether you're a number team, a seven, or a flag route, a stick corner is another name for it. This is a five and hitch throw. You can throw it off timing. If you feel like you've got it and you want to put it on him, hit him in space, you can throw it off timing. But generally speaking, this is a five and reset or five and one hitch. And you're going to try to put this ball on him. Hopefully he keeps it high so he allows you to throw him flat if there's anybody over the top. But it's still a rhythm, still a timing route. But you want to throw this again as he makes his break here and you see that he has separation. You've made your read. Get that ball up in the air. Give him some air to work to that ball and throw him open. Next, the comeback route, the five. I skipped numbers there on you. But you want to throw this one, a comeback generally. This is a 15-yard. At the higher levels, you run this about 17 yards. So this can be either a seven-step big boy but drop under, with a hitch, Every, any seven-step drop that you're trying to throw on timing is always going to have a hitch or a reset to it. So seven-step hitch and throw this ball and bring him back down the sideline. You're covering a lot more air with this ball, and so you have to be precise about where it's going to be, and you have to know where that defender is coming from. If he stays outside and has outside leverage, you're going to bring this comeback back in towards the ball. If he's inside, now you're going to bring him away and throw him open, allow him to use his body. There's also a deep over, which is generally a 6, so 5, 10, 15, somewhere between 16 and 18 yards. If you're throwing it like a dagger route, that's 7 or play action 7 plus 1 hitch, and you're going to throw it in that first window. Two hitches, you're going to throw it into the second window if a backer gets in your way. The eight we already talked about, over the top post, can be one or two hitches. And then the nine route, under center, that's five, one reset, one hitch, and a throw, put air underneath it so he can go get it, versus man press, that could be just five hit and throw. And then out of the shotgun... It's going to be three hitch and throw, but it is definitely a timing route. Remember, you don't have to see him get open to know he's going to be open. So as soon as you know you're going to have that window to throw into, as soon as you know your receiver's going to be open, get set, get your feet organized, and let her rip. As a quarterback, you want to be an anticipation thrower. You don't want to be a see-it-and-throw-it guy because windows close up quickly. So I hope that helps. A little bit of quarterback training, how to throw the football, when to throw the football, and how you want to think about it in the pocket.